<laughs> Crackers are also good for a, an upset stomach. Yeah. Burnt toast. Burnt toast is actually good for that. It's called the Brick Diet. I just researched this because I just came back diet? from Colombia. It's bananas. Yeah. It's caught a bacterial infection. <laughs> yes. In still have some if you want. <laughs> <laughs> the crackers are the it's all infection. Just come over here and it'll leave over and boom. Bacterial infection. It's, uh, yeah, it's called the Brick Diet. I've learned a lot over the past week. Um, bananas, rice. Burnt toast. Toast. Burnt toast. Burnt toast. Has to be burnt? Yeah, the, the, the charcoal helps settle the stomach. Oh, really? Oh. So what saved me at the end is I, dealt, I was taking activated charcoal, and what finally did it... So that same thing as burnt toast. I, I took, I double, I had to double up on my doses, and then finally I got out. This is a Devil May Cry convention, or not convention, <laughs> Devil May Cry panel about bacterial infections <laughs> and crackers. You didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> Even superheroes have bad Demons days. get diarrhea too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's really really <laughs> so, um, that's why Virgil walks around so constipated. <laughs> he wants nothing to do with this mortal bacterial infection. No pun intended. So, um, today, hi guys. I'm Ruben Landon, and you guys already jotted. talked in there. And, um, I have a sort of some behind the scenes things that I'd like to show you guys, but we're just waiting for some technical things, um, and hopefully we can get it get it going. Um, Assuming you guys are all familiar with the game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, I you guess will be once he has these things once, he wants to show you. Once, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, but Devil May Cry. Quite familiar. <laughs> What's that? He'll be quite familiar once you show him the things that you have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you have forgotten over the years, because it has been 10 years. Wow, it has been 10 years, hasn't it? Yeah. 10 years. Ten year, well, hasn't 10 years you know, since, for, since Devil May Cry 3. Since, since we read, since we did, since Dan and I did our motion yeah, capture. 2001, 2004. Uh, 2005. I, it, three, or four or five. That's yeah. Right. So, um, when did we do four? Uh, six, seven. I think it, it came out eight, but we eight. did it like seven, six or seven. When we, when we started working on it, it was like, oh, oh, right, okay. So it came out 2006 and 2007, yeah. Right, yeah. And, uh, and Johnny actually came and auditioned for Dante. I did. And I didn't get it. <laughs> I and did. Yeah, yeah, I auditioned totally for Dante did. too, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, both Johnny and I are ten times the Dante who we could ever be. <laughs> and he had rigged that. He had rigged that so that he could be Dante after he auditioned. Yeah, people. I, and I made sure that we had horrible auditions. <laughs> he edited ours. He went back and he put <laughs> blurred he put our faces. Somebody else <laughs> made us look more Asian. Mind. Yes. <laughs> and and that was the end of that. Yes. I, you guys know my tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot deny it. Um, but uh, luckily, for me, for my sake, uh, I was able to, to hold sort on of to the hold on to the role. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny, because I actually auditioned. It's, 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 it's so bizarre, looking back at it. Um, uh, how I got involved, which then these guys got involved, and it's all you know, interconnected, is... Uh, my partner and I in Japan at the time, his name's uh, Takuya Shibata, we were promoting to Capcom to hire Western actors, or Western English-speaking, native English-speaking, fluent actors, fluent English-speaking, na never mind, native, <laughs> native English speakers. The bacteria type. <laughs> yeah, bacteria. He speaks English too. Yes. Yeah. I, I, second, second language. I mean, kind of. Right? <laughs> Uh, so we were pitching to them to hire uh, motion capture actors, as well as the voiceovers. But the voiceovers, they were sort of already um, farming out to America or to Canada for a lot of their games. And uh, they were doing all the motion capture in Japan with Japanese performers. And my partner and I, um, especially me, sort of doing some motion capture in Japan. My first role was uh, Chris Redfield in Resident Evil back in 1997. That was my first sort of major role in the motion capture realm. And I was the only native English speaker cast in, the, in that 
role. And everybody else was speaking Japanese, obviously, that's all the only language they spoke. And uh, they gave me my lines in Japanese and English. And they said, we actually want you to perform your lines in English because we think it'll be you know, better. And I'm like, of course, yeah. Because if you're gonna dub it into English eventually, then it's gonna translate better in the final product. So I was sort of, because of that experience, um, I had the idea my, with my partner to pitch to Capcom and other game companies in Japan to say, hey, don't, um, you don't need to do this process of hiring Japanese performers and then going and getting the dubs done. There's actually very good performers in America that we can get for a relatively uh, low cost. You know, it's not gonna break the bank because they had this image that, oh, you know, this is just gonna cost too much and it's crazy. And, and I said, no, you know, what? I, we sort of asked what their budgets were and they said, um, they sort of gave us an idea and we're like, yeah, we can get, we'll get, we'll be able to get performers in, in America and we could do it all with um, native English speakers from the get-go. And I'm that- sorry, there's a there's an audition for Steam Room Stories, that's right up your alley. Steam Room Stories? Steam stories. Yes, I could use a Steam Room. <laughs> 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 you, just, you, know, you want to see the Steam Room after this? <laughs> <laughs> Not unless we're auditioning together, because we can make money. Okay. <laughs> you got a waterproof kill? Um, you got wipes for your bacterial? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of interest. sorry, sorry, no. It's very important what you said. Yeah, so please, please pay attention. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, anyways, that's how we got involved. Is we pitched this idea to Capcom. Um, they we did a test run with Resident Evil Outbreak. Do you guys remember that one? All right, and we did Outbreak one and two, and they sort of they liked it. They liked the um, scene. English, even though they still switched the voices later, they liked seeing the transition, the final product, it was just a lot smoother, the performers, the performances seemed a lot more natural. So then Devil May Cry was like sitting there, they were about to do something with it, they were just finished two and they weren't really happy with it, and they're like, look, and they came to us and they're like, we wanna do this, um, uh, my company at the time was Just Cause, they said, we wanna do this Just Cause style. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And, uh, and they said, hey, Ruben, you, you know this character, Dante, you kind of look like the character. You want to audition for it? And I'm like, yeah, of course. And I was in Japan, and I did a pre-audition before we actually started auditioning and auditioning. It was really weird, because my partner was like, hey, we've got to spray paint your hair white. Like, it's just an audition. And like, no, it's going to make a difference. You did. And, <laughs> did, and, they, and they did that. And we did, we actually did. I can't believe I'm doing Dyer this. Spray paint. Just like the, you know, the candle well, spray, the silver spray. Tips, yeah. yeah, so I'm sitting here and going, I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> and then I go for this meeting, and it wasn't like a regular audition, it was like a meeting. It was like more like a meeting. And then there wasn't really any lines or anything either. They just said, hey, okay, uh, hold the sword, which was just like a regular bokken. I don't know if you know what a bokken is, uh, just a wooden sword. Hold the sword, walk around a little bit, and just have the silver hair. I just felt ridiculous, <laughs> and um, and I did that. I'm like, does that mean I get the part? You know? And they're like, no. And like, okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> this is really important because had he not gotten this role, Johnny and I would. Yeah. Be well, uh, kind of. I mean, then they they wanted us to then audition folks, and this is what we you know we proposed to them. We said we can do auditions in in America and and sort of. Uh, oh, get the did right you people. all audition for Dante? Yeah, so I, I had all you guys audition for, I don't know if I had you audition for just Dante or Dante and Virgil, I don't, maybe Dante, both, just Dante. Just Dante. Yeah. You had me at Dante and Virgil. And Virgil. Yeah. Um, and I brought in others, I think I even had Jason Font come in for, for Right, well. he, said, he said that. I think, you know, um, so these were all Power Rangers. He wasn't cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't spray paint his hair. <laughs> he wasn't going to that extent. But we sort of, um, so they, they, you know, I don't know why I spray painted my hair. I'm looking back at that now. That, that was just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but I guess it sort of helped me get the role because it maybe, you know, they had this image of me with silver hair. And um, so, anyways, I orchestrated. Burned in their brains for the rest of their lives. <laughs> yes. And I orchestrated the auditions. And, you know, this was, so I was on board as a producer as well as, 
the role of Dante, but I didn't even know if I had the role of Dante. I was sort of going through the translation processes with the script, helping with that, helping with the rewrites, and a lot of it, I was like, this doesn't make sense, we have to rewrite this, we have to do this. So the first, Devil May Cry 3, was me and my partner translating it, just me and him, we translated the whole script. So that's ultimately what the dialogue that's there, and then we tweaked it once we hired the performers, Dan, you know, uh, gave a lot of input. Um, <coughs> Johnny gave a lot of input that's right. in his role. So actually, that's what why I think the the Devil May Cry experience, my experience with it, and um, for both three and four, and the team that was brought together was everybody collaborated in so many ways. And no, nobody was. There was no like we had a writer there that was helping Mike Cooney for part two, or I'm sorry, part four. Um, part three there wasn't. Um, we didn't, he wasn't around, we didn't have the budget, and we just didn't think that far ahead, but um, we had a little more money for four, and we were like, well, let's get a properly trained writer here to help us out with this stuff. And, um, but everybody really put in everything, you know, they had the basic concept, and then it was the collaborative of everybody that, that did it, but yeah, actually, I don't know, I'm just still thinking about my hair being straight. <laughs> 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 I mean, one of the things I remember is that I thought was a good reason to have people like us is that there were a lot of things that didn't really translate, like some of the stances yeah. that they had you doing or whatever, yeah. you know, and it, it just certain things didn't really translate to the world, I guess. You know, it was more a cultural thing for Japan. Yeah, there was a lot of um, a lot of stuff that Capcom wanted me to do, and said, this is the difficult position with where I was at, because I was um, a producer and an actor on it, and I spoke fluent Japanese, and I was so embedded in, yeah. in the Japanese culture that they sort of didn't see me as an authority on English, or, or on, uh, on being American, even though I am, mostly Japanese on the inside. But, uh, but they sort of like, when I, I would tell them something like, no, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna fly in the West. You know, in English speaking countries, if you do that, that's not gonna, oh, no, that, no, we don't, we don't believe you. <laughs> and that's literally, they would do that all the time. And I'd have to like, uh, well, drag, me drag over, Johnny or Dan or yeah. other cast and say, like, can you explain yeah. to these people <laughs> that, that's, this is just not cool <laughs> in the West. And they're like, no, Ruben doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, he's not American. <laughs> Jeez. And, and that's, that was sort of what was happening a lot in three. And what happened, I didn't have these guys with me in three. It was for the first, um, Dan sort of came a little bit later. I had the first couple of days of shooting where it was just me doing cutscenes, And I was getting so frustrated that they were telling me to do things. I'm like, no, this is, and I had like 50 directors, 50 cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot of that. And I, and I just got so upset. And I sort of did a, I sort of did like a typical actor thing, and I just sort of pounded. And, uh, <laughs> typical, actor. typical actor thing. I sort of look at both you guys, and I pounded. I pounded. <laughs> Um, and I, I didn't listen to anybody, and I was like, screw this, which yeah, actually really helped. What you do, yeah. That's which true. actually helped the character, because the character, Kim, is, you know, is that character, like, I don't screw this. I don't. Sometimes you're gonna get so many notes from 10 producers, director, showrunner, writer, and they don't, usually when you're getting 10, 15 different sets of notes, they're always, of course, contradicting, and yeah. it's a sign that they don't know what they're looking for, so you have to show them. And so what I learned to do, and I learned this on Power Rangers actually, um, is the first take is always mine. I give them, I listen to them, I go, okay, yeah, sure, sure. And then I just do what I'm gonna do for at least the first one or two takes. And usually, usually I find, and almost, I'm talking when I say usually, almost 100% of, of the time I find, they go, that's what I'm talking about. And I'll look at them and I'll go, no, that's not what you said. <laughs> In my mind, because I want them to feel like they won. 100% of the time they'll go, almost 100% of the time they'll go, 
that's exactly what we're talking about. Good job, good job. Everybody will come, start congratulating. Good job, that's it. And what you realize is they didn't really know what they wanted. They just wanted to see something interesting. Yeah. And if and you can get caught in this vicious cycle where you're trying to please all of their notes and you're no longer doing something interesting. And so that's why you've got to actually do, of course, what, what an actor, and that's what he's talking about. Yeah, my first day on, on Devil May Cry was miserable because I was trying to please everybody and incorporate all the notes and do all this stuff and then it drove, me, it drove me nuts and then I just was like, no. And then day two, by day two, I think halfway through, I just gave up and I was like, I, I'm no, screw this. And then I started just doing my own thing and then they're like, like oh yeah, that was, that's, that's it. And I'm like, it's amazing that, to watch. That is nothing what you said. <laughs> it's amazing to watch happen. And but uh, but yeah, I learned yeah. that was my lesson. See, I hadn't, because I hadn't had, um, I'd been mostly, stunt guy, um, smaller roles, like Dante was my biggest role at that t up until that time. So I hadn't had that sort of, uh, other than with just stunts, just basic you know, physical movements. And I think that's how the characters that you end up loving are actually born. You act a lot, of, you ask a lot of actors, go back and talk to a lot of actors who've done characters that people remember through time, and it's gonna be a similar situation. And Dante is not Dante without Ruben. I can't do Dante. I cannot do Ruben's Dante, and Ruben's Dan Dante actually auditioned for Dante for part four. And I was damn good. He was. <laughs> he was just not that Dante. Because uh, they, 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 again, this is going once back Once he established to, himself as that character, that's it. That's him. Him, he owns it. And nobody can do it as well as he can. Well, Except for Dan. No, I can't. Oh, okay. Maybe there's an actor or two out there. <laughs> as well. but, but the point is, he brings, he brings himself to not I don't think Robert Damon. Matt Damon? Uh, no, 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 no. All right. Who, who is out there that could do a Dante that would be good? Should um, we even be bringing this up? No. That's pretty interesting. So, um, it, it's funny because going back to this not, not trusting me because I speak fluent Japanese, it's just so weird. Um, and because I'm so, I'm too close to them or something, it was weird. They any, if you don't speak the language, somewhat you're somewhat of a foreigner. And this is no offense to any Japanese that are in the audience. Sorry, Miho, if you understand anything I'm saying. Um, I don't mean any offense. It's not all Japanese. It's just this situation. Um, but they, I just became too close to everybody. I was like their their buddy, their friend, and they were like he's he's too think too close. And then for part four, they were like. Yeah, Dante's older and he's different. And even though I was like in my thirties, they were like, "Yeah, Dante's like 19 and, and, and he's nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand years old <laughs> in, in part three, and now he's like in his in his thirties in part four. And I'm like, I'm in my thirties. Like, no, no, no. You you did Dante in three. That's that's young Dante, and you're young Dante. We need old Dante. Let's call that. <laughs> and, and I was a damn good old Dante. <laughs> you were two, you were like problem 10, was, you were 100,000 years old. I had the reverse op, uh, yes. uh, problem. I had already established Virgil. Right, every and time they, they saw Dante. They didn't see me as Dante. And, and, yeah. So luckily, because if they brought in anybody else other than Dan to uh, he audition. Knew that. He knew that. Then, then, you should get Dan. He's really good. No, I, it was, no, they all wanted to see you as Dante. Well, what the hell happened? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you became Kratos. I didn't even talk as Kratos. <laughs> you were Kratos. I'm dude. just walking around as Kratos. No, you had a good scene. Well, you still we were Kratos. Yeah, you were. Well, okay, I'll take it. Okay, how many guys knew that Dan was Kratos in Devil May Cry 4? He was not the voice, but he was the motion capture body Which actor. would, to be honest, when I heard afterwards and saw the cutscenes, I was like, I was so used to yours. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, that was some of the stuff I'm going to show you if we ever get our... How's that coming, by the way? Do we have an adapter thingy? Is that anybody? I'm talking to you because you're standing there. You're, you're, like, you're near everybody, the tech. Everybody at that table just... just they just away. took off. The tech guys were like, screw it. It's on the way. Yes. It's on the way. Awesome. Hey. Um, so, yeah, we're going to show some Dan as Kratos and... Um, it, it really is a tight family. No, I think it's great how it happened because now they're going to bring us back. You can say that, right? No. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> what? Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Perhaps in the future there's a alternate universe where... <laughs> okay, so I shared with these guys. I'll share with you guys what I shared with these guys, okay? This is what I know. I'm not in direct communication. This is absolute fact. I cannot lie. I there made is a, a tremendous I have, amount of... I have made a vow to not lie for the rest of my life. I promise. And this is, this is not lying, because I don't lie. Um, there is rumors. And I know I've heard rumors from people who know people... In a galaxy at, far, far away. At, <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away known as Capcom. So I, I, have, I have had no direct... No, Pac-com. Pac um, that's kind of what it sounds at the end of the game, whenever they, like at the game trailer, Pac-com. Pac-com. That's, that's exactly how it sounds, isn't it? Pac-com. No, they say it really fast. Pac-com. Well, they do that too. Yes. <laughs> so anyways, um, so I, I know a guy, or a, or a girl, or a guy and a girl, who know people at Capcom. 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 And I've heard from them, so this is rumors, this isn't, there is no direct, I cannot confirm anything because I haven't had any direct conversations it, 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 with it's, anybody. It's what we were talking about, the sighting of an alien. Or... You want to talk about aliens? <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine a world where that, that's... I know this is a devil may cry panel, but we can talk about aliens. I know, we'll save that for 11.30. Um, so, anyways, I know a guy and a girl and who know people, and I've heard things. Okay, you've worked us up right to the point. Get, where's, bring us the release. <laughs> <laughs> the release? Give us the money shot. The money shot. <laughs> There's rumors that there could be a Devil May Cry 5. Oh! <laughs> Within the same um, universe and characters that we have portrayed in the past. And somebody even told me today, was it, I think it was you, that said on their fiscal, uh, on their, yeah, on their are, books, explain like, that. I'm, on this, I'm assuming it's some sort of link of their um, fiscal year sales. Fiscal year sales. Or something like that. They, um, there, was two, there was two blanks that just said, one was for 2016, one said Dead Rising series, and one said Devil May Cry series. That's all right. they said. Right, okay, so it's so like... It's not, it's not DMC4 special edition or DMC, DMC, DD. Right. Because that was tough. Well, so so in the projections for 2016, they have an idea. there seems to be a Devil May Cry So don't series. go out there and ruin it by tweeting it just yet. Right, and, but, and I should also throw this, that there has been direct, because I get forwarded stuff all the time, people are like, is this true? And I'm like, right, if they're saying it's true, I guess it's true. Uh, I don't know, I'm not talking to them directly, but um, Itsuno-san, and some Itsuno-san, who was the sort of the game director for Devil May Cry three and four, two, three, and four, and I think he was like a consultant for the the one that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> um, and he he had said that that um, you mean that emo one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that they're that they were discussing and talking about it and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, obviously there's rumors, and um, the, the only, I guess the only thing that I can say w with my rumor that makes it a little more exciting is that they would be bringing us back. So that's, that's the exciting little tidbit of that are there, rumor. Are there, are there still emos out there? That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> You're looking at about 10 of them out there. DMC emo. <laughs> no, not gonna happen. It's done. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the next one's gonna be DMC Emo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Demo may cry. <laughs> look, look out for it. So, um, so why Power Ranger folks in the Devil May Cry thing? Um, from my experience, and this is why casting. This is why I called Jason Font and many other uh, Power Rangers people who had been um, Power Rangers or worked on the Power Rangers. I think I had uh, Patricia Jolly audition as Lady. Oh, um, yeah. She was at the audition for Lady. And she was, she was runner, she was like close. She came oh, to the callbacks. Um, She's a good actress. She is. Who else did we have? I'm trying to think. So I, I called in, I think, oh, I had Aaron Cahill come in as uh, Lady as well. She auditioned. And she got pretty far. 
So, the, you guys know who she is? Right? Okay. So, anyways, the reason I call these Power Ranger actors and performers is because they, they knew, especially at the time when motion capture was still young and it's infancy, um, the expressions of the face weren't on there as well. And the, the, the fingers, if you notice, like Virgil when he holds a cup. <laughs> when he holds his sword. <laughs> that's, that's the detail of... Oh. Pretty much the way it goes in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, especially. <laughs> no, it's amazing. But in the video game, that would somehow magically stick to his hand. <laughs> Without closing it, right? Without closing it, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, that, that um, the performer, the performances needed to be a little more exaggerated. And because of all, all these guys and girls have been in the Power Ranger realm, things are a little more, as, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> things are a little more exaggerated than they are with just regular acting. Um, and, and we are cartoon characters. We're superheroes. We're bigger than life. Even if we weren't cartoons. Oh, I guess we were cartoons. But I mean, if we were... Animation. Animation. We're like superhero animations. We're not like, you know... Simpsons. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, you need a physical actors. Oh, yeah, physical you actors. So we're physically, yeah. physically a bit more animated. You need physical actors who can understand that type of acting. It's almost a special type of acting. Well, this was when motion capture was new, and so you had to exaggerate a yeah. little bit. Yeah. yeah, and and then uh, once we got to Devil May Cry Four, new platform, new system, the technology was way better. We had facial recognition, yeah. but even still, the perform you're still playing. Um, animated characters, so things have to be a little bit bigger, and um, I think these guys understand it, uh, and I just knew not even to waste time with calling in actors who, who didn't have that sort of mentality, that experience, so that's why I just went straight to uh, former Power Ranger folks who sort of who I had worked with. Because we'd worked in, we'd, we'd had experience with the suit acting kind of stuff too. The suit acting and also working with Japanese cultures. Yeah. Because That's true. the That's Japanese, true. Uh, you know, Power Rangers had, you know, true, Koichi true. and everybody else working there and then working in this sort of bilingual international. Now we've been, at least seven people have walked out of the room since you've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll let somebody else talk. You are killing it. I'm waiting for that damn cord. <laughs> so I don't have to yeah. talk at all. Is it HDMI? Uh, it's a, uh, no, it's a... Uh, How are we doing over there? VGA. VGA. Uh, oh. It's not going to happen. Any questions? So, yeah, questions. That's you. You were, were you producing Double Make Cry 4 as well? Mm -hmm. Alright, um, now there's been ideas that Double Make Cry 4 basically feels like half of the game. Since you go as Nero, 50%, then 50% back to Dante, who does not really have his own enemies or his own bosses or his own enemies. Now, is it true that Double Make Cry 4 had like a lot more to it? Like, I mean, most games usually do, but like, the Double Make Cry 4 basically had like 50% more of a game for like their own side of the story or something like that. Nope. <laughs> so literally intended like for you and then you go backwards. It, it was called um, running out of ideas and running out of time. Ideas and time. And, and then we have and to It was fit probably one of those things where it was like Ruben was saying something like, no, we don't believe you, we're going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice. But uh, no, uh, in this, this, I didn't produce the game side, I only produced the cinematics. So the actual in-game stuff was a whole different team. Um, but I, what, I, what I can say, what I know from having the communications with those guys, was that to appease the Dante fans, they wanted to squeeze Dante in there somewhere and give them uh, playability as Dante. So they sort of, uh, what do you call it, um, forced, forced, even though in, you know, with gameplay and story, you know when you force something? It's like, it's like, why it doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't really work, but they kind of, in their minds, they had to do it to appease the fans. So they forced Dante into the game. It really was a Nero game. I read the, art, I read the original 
reason our book Gumbled. The Art Book 2013 was like a graphic arts book that was like released in America like this October. And it said the game was supposed to be 70% Nero, 30% Dante. So mm -hmm. who knows exactly what the intent is. Yeah, I think that's more accurate. I, I think, you know, they probably was even more Nero, and then they just knew that they had to squeeze Dante in there, but then they were like, well, they were thinking, well, what are they, all the Dante fans? Are they going to get pissed off because Dante's not in this? And then, as usual, they tack on Virgil at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, ten years later, or eight, seven years later. Right. Um, no, so they, <laughs> they, yeah, that's, that's, I, from my understanding is they just were trying to make something that it wasn't, but still try to, you know, it force it a little bit. Makes sense, because Dante as a character is broken. Is what? Broken. Broken. The enemy hitboxes do not match up with Dante, and he has a lot of glitches you can do if you look at style videos online, boy, how it's uh, like is, Did they fix watching? those in special editions, though? So he's a flawed character. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Much like the actor that portrays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but aren't we all flawed characters? Then? That's the flawed characters are the most that's interesting. That's why you like them. That's why he's so popular. That's exactly. what I'm saying. That's right. No, they didn't fix him on. Instead, they added Batman's a flawed character. And then you need a perfect, you need a perfect guy like me to come along to show you how flawed it is. <laughs> that's why you didn't get the audition, and you're too perfect. You didn't. You couldn't be Dante. Don't you know, me. I was drawn this way. They just added Lady Trish and um, Virgil over here, and they're even more broken than you. Especially Virgil. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Basically, he's talking about gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, so I, I'm sorry, I did not, that was not my work. <laughs> I, I, I only did the cinematics. I thought, I thought you directed everything. You created the series. No, no. I, you know, he had to do that, that Dan cinematics. Southworth is that man. <laughs> 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 He's the man that envisioned, created, uh, masterminded the whole Double Mike Crack 4 series. <laughs> yes. In his home. You know at why? Night. Because I was so successful on the, the Devil May Cry emo series <laughs> <laughs> that they let me direct number four. I put it all together. I had a dream one night, came in the next morning, wrote it all down, and boom, it was done. One more question for Who's better, Uncle Dante or Daddy Urban? <laughs> Uncle Dante or Daddy Urban? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know what? I don't even know if he's ever met his dad. He has been. So, I'm pretty sure he's Yeah. Wait, he died? Wait, he died and he's still in special edition? How's that work? <laughs> <laughs> How's that work? No, he didn't die. Dante, I mean, Virgil didn't die. He died in one, then. Nello Angel. We don't talk about that. That's <laughs> <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away in a parallel We don't universe. talk about one or two, right? We don't talk about two. Right. We can two. talk about one. One two. is okay. Two is the one. Two doesn't exist. exist. Two doesn't exist. No offense to the two cosplayer over here. <laughs> <laughs> is that one? That's one. Oh, that's one. Okay. No. Right? Wait, devil, what, that, no, nothing's official. Nothing here is official. There is no official allergy to any of this. We are not on the Capcom payroll, and the Capcom you assassins are outside you the devil door. Devil right. three, Virgil, <laughs> at the epilogue, Virgil's in hell fighting Satan himself. He's alive. <laughs> No, look at Devil May Cry 3. There's nothing, the only thing official about it is official Devil May Cry 3. He's alive. I think. <laughs> you have a question? Yeah. How oh. long, sorry. Go ahead. Yes. How long does it take you to do the motion capture for the game? Like, how long was that? Just I mean, that was there a couple for, weeks. Yeah. Just not as long as a regular acting. But the actual yeah. game takes like a couple yeah. of years. Yeah, the game takes a couple of years. So it, it's, it, for us, usually for both 3 and 4, um, I think total, how many hours of cinematics? There's like two hours of cinematics uh, for those on average. Um, it takes about two weeks because it's going at a much faster pace because you're not getting all the insert shots. All your camera work is done in post, so we're sort of doing master shots um, of everything. And so you go in and you block it. And we rehearsed it as well for the key, the key scenes. Um, so yeah, I think it was like two weeks is was the average. <laughs> Wait, are you okay? You're, gonna, you're ruining your dinner. Diet. I'm destroying the sugar up here. <laughs> <laughs> bouncing off the walls in a minute. They basically record us doing the scene, 
you know, they, they capture our emotions and our acting, and then they can go in and put the camera wherever, you know. You know, it's like when they shoot a movie, they'll have a master shot, then they might do a two shot, or close-ups, or get something on the action, you know, but you just shoot it like a master is what, master is like everything. You know? And they- It's Abe, right? <coughs> Abe, is it Abe? Your name? David. David. David? No, who, who are we talking about? Green shirt. Hey. Oh, green shirt. Brandon. Brandon. Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Brian. Brian. Very Brian. impressed. Very impressed with neuro knowledge. Brandon. Are you Brandon? Brandon. You Brandon? <laughs> Brandon. Brandon. Speak up, man. Very impressive <laughs> thorough knowledge of the game. Yes. Except for the fact that Virgil is dead. That was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of Devil May Cry, Virgil is alive. Devil May Cry three, and he's in Devil May Cry four. I'm sorry. I did. You were saying something. <laughs> No, I think it's we're the sugar done. man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am very impressed with your knowledge. It's, it's awesome. Question. Do you have one? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a question for Dan, but I'd like your opinion to uh, input as well. Um, what is your favorite snack to eat while doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> while Aaron's. doing. Are you amused? No. <laughs> Voice for Virgil. My favorite snack to eat? <laughs> You're eating a lot of snacks. I'll say, I'll say I'm laughing at Daffy, I guess. Well, it's so salty. <laughs> While we're versing, voicing the characters? Yeah, usually it's like a throw usually, closet or something, right? I, mean, I, I just thought I would throw the, the part about the game in there to tie it in with the, the panel, but, oh. but really I'm just curious which favorite food is. Oh, well, Japanese food. Best cuisine in the world. When we when he gets to Japan, we, we can't get him out. <laughs> <laughs> He's, they basically have to deport him. Yes. <laughs> because the, the entire sushi volume of Japan goes down. <laughs> they, they literally uh, you know, can't fish anymore. It's a fish market, man. It's crack for me. <laughs> Did we go? We went to we went the, the fish market. Yeah. Did we go? Did you go? I didn't go. I, I've been to the fish okay. market. Oh, man. Which I would not eat right now, by the way, because of the radiation. radiation. Right, yeah. Not only the bacterial, but the bacteria is fine. They know how to clean their fish there. No, the bacteria, right? is, the bacteria is dead from the radiation. That's exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> it's the radiation. Now. And so are you. <laughs> or you will be in 10 years. <laughs> so, uh, Nanotechnology yeah. will fix that. <laughs> He's right, from aliens. I've seen it. Aliens, I know it. I've extracted things. Are you going to show the clips? Uh, yeah, tonight I'm going. I'm if going they can find them. Yeah, if they can. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's happening. Uh, the Devil May Cry games you worked on respectively, which scenes did you, did you did the part for, would you say, were your favorite that you can remember? If we can find my cable. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you those scenes. Yeah, you could open up, if you could open up the brain here, <laughs> and there'd be a ticker tape. This is what's going on yeah, while you're asking the question. What kind of things would we be looking at? What kind of things would you be showing? What kind of things would I be showing? Yeah. If I had a cable? If you had a cable. <laughs> Even though the cable's on its way, <laughs> right? Yes. It'll make it here as soon as we're done. Oh my gosh, is he going to be able to do it in time? Yeah. Yeah, um, my favorite scenes? Gosh, oh yeah, I liked all the fight scenes. To answer your question, back there, fella with the funny accent. <laughs> the one on the holiday. The one on <laughs> Actually, my favorite scenes were some of the fight scenes. And uh, any interaction I got with this guy was actually fun too. Yeah, um, I have my two favorite. Fight, uh, not fight scenes, but uh, scenes with these guys on my laptop. As soon as we get a cable, and I'll show it to you. <laughs> um, one was the Kratos death scene. Was pretty uh, like I almost teared up. Like seriously. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if, we're, if we, in, we include that, then of course with Johnny as well. Yeah. Well, anytime I get to interact with these. And guys. then with Johnny was sort of the last scene when I give him Yamato sword at the end. That was like. You know, and it came together really nice. Like, I forgot about that death scene. The, that was, that you, was you did a good death scene. Actually, I forgot I did all the acting in that. You did? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you were there acting. <laughs> you were there acting. Because <laughs> they take your voice away, and you're like, oh, all I did was the motion. No, right. actually, I, no, you were actually in these. There was a lot. There yeah. was there some, there's some good scenes. There were your choices. See, this is where yeah. this is what I, I cut my frustration with the motion capture thing is because I do you know I do Chris Redfield and. Uh, I've been doing Chris Redfield for years, and some other characters, uh, and Dan too, we, we do a lot, I don't know if Johnny so much, but we do a lot of motion capture performances, 
And that's the blueprint. Those voiceover actors go in and they have to just basically work off our performances. Yeah. And they, they dub it, but, but all the people only know Roger Craig Smith. Great guy, amazing actor, great. I'm glad he did the work he did, but nobody knows that I did Chris Redfield. Like it's, it's not even in the... You are Chris Redfield. I am Chris Redfield. Punch <laughs> 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 bullers. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, um, but it's, it's, it is it's because in this case... The three been, of us are your total gaming experience. <laughs> <laughs> Every game out there. Killzone, Battlefield, yes. what else? Resident Evil. Yes. Every, Devil May yes. Cry. Devil May Cry. So, it's funny because Dan doesn't even remember himself Disaster. as himself. <laughs> Doing, playing himself. That's um, all I remember. Yeah, and, 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 and nobody, of course, if he can't remember, nobody else is going to remember. That's why I have my video! <laughs> <laughs> and prove it! Here it is! Prove it. No? No. Uh oh, no. That's not the expression we were. Is that not going to happen so the, for the whole night? Can we get like an HDMI? Anybody have a projector? It's coming. In your car? It's coming. Like, yeah. It's coming. Oh, it is. It's in it on the way. Okay, that, you gave us that. Any other questions on your laptop? Oh, we got tons of questions. Yeah. Come on. Don't they? Like, if you could give us some uh, backstory on how the special, uh, the recent Devil May Cry 4 special edition came about. Like, how, what motivated Capcom to bring it back, sort of, after that? I had heard, I had heard that, um, Demo May Cry? That Demo May Cry was such a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, not, yeah, I mean, it wasn't such a disaster, but it did, it, it did not perform what they were wanting it to near the numbers. They had ex expectations and everything else, and it just totally underperformed. Um, not that it was a bad game. I think the game I played it, I was like, oh, this is a fun game. But it's just, it's when not you, yeah. Dante's yeah, not yeah you, you, you take the name of something, and people are expecting a certain something, and it's just not, it was completely not what people were expecting. Um, so, to sort of prove to Capcom that the original, uh, series, you know, that we worked on, uh, it still had some life, that still had some fandom going in it. I think that was one of the reasons to sort of do a special edition first, to test the waters, to see if it was going to work. And I was very fearful because I'm like, that game is so old and people have moved on. I don't know if, you know, you're going to get the response you're going to want, but obviously it well overperformed anything that they were even expecting. So it's... Yeah, it, 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 it proved to them that there is still life in the... What came about that made Devil May Cry 4 was the awesomeness you see before you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> Virgil, people still like Virgil. I don't know why, but they still do. And uh, bringing, putting him into, as a playable character, I guess helped, I guess. <laughs> they gave like, Damn straight. a little bit of like extra backstory. Um, they showed you know, Virgil away decades ago back in Fortuna, but like was there an intention to like you know, show the connection between Nero and Virgil a bit more? Because I in the final product so. it seemed there was just a like, he just comes and some lady looks at him and he leaves. I, I think they did it masterfully because all of you people are asking those questions. <laughs> and that's that's the sign of it, having it, having them, having them having done it just right. Yeah. They actually, the whole uh, Virgil being daddy connection was, originally they thought people oh, were going right to find, them. I think that's funny too. Yeah, they, <laughs> they thought they were going to, pe people were going to figure that out after four, but nobody seemed to figure that out, and they were so, yeah, most people didn't. I, I'd go to cons, nobody knew that, and I was like, can, can I save this? I actually, gave, I actually gave it up during an interview before the game was released. Right. <laughs> Nobody was, caught it. Yeah. I introduced Johnny as my son. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. <laughs> and then, I was like, shh, no, don't. And then afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, don't worry, nobody pays attention. To me. And he was right, Wait, and they don't. So, I mean, especially the guys in Japan. I think people were saying that originally that um, Nero was too old, considering the ages of uh, Virgil and Dante back in the but I think with the special edition, Demon Sperm. 
<laughs> you got to remember, we're thousands of years old. It took place like a few decades ago, um, before Devil May Cry 4, Virgil's uh, Virgil's Virgil's appearance was Virgil's appearance was Virgil's appearance How are we doing over there at Tech World? Awesome. Yeah. Nice. So, oh, I'm sorry, oh, were you finishing? I didn't know you Yeah, you guys. Like the special mission sort of uh, stretched out, uh, corrected the timeline because people were thinking it was too short of a time for Nero to be an adult. A lot of, lot, of, lot of extra time to speculate that kind of stuff. What's the next question? <laughs> we'll just go on back. You're next. Go ahead. Okay. We'll, we'll leave it to you, too, since... Well. Yeah. Is your question for him? <laughs> it's for all of you. Yes. If the real DMC5 is realized, what that could have been left out about your characters would you want to see realized for you to learn about your characters and for us to learn? Total world Ruben's domination. <laughs> <laughs> Total world heaven and hell domination. <laughs> no, I agree, yeah. I'd like to see more of that uh, the dark side, potentially, you know? Because there was a bit of that, the hint of Nero going darker, you know? So to explore that more might be pretty interesting, you know. Ruben has the same answer I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. I just want to work. I want to have a job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> miss in the back. Um, what's the hardest part about motion capturing? The fact that because a lot of these games tend to be very top secret, they don't give you your lines until the day of, and it's 15 pages. Oh. <laughs> you can learn on the spot. Um, because it's motion capture, there's no, there's no setting up and taking, breaking down of lights whenever you change the angles of the, the shots, uh, or set dressing, or location changes. Every scene is just shot back to back to back to back to back, and that can be tiring and uh, at times daunting to stay in character with enough energy. Uh, but you get used to it. Yeah, I think maybe, I mean that, and for me it was like, the, it was the first thing I did, motion capture-wise, you know? And I was used to kind of imagining giant monsters or whatever from Power Rangers, but it was a whole different experience, because you're just in a warehouse, Yeah, you, know? you have to imagine everything. You, you, have to, you totally have to imagine everything. But they were really good at making things out of duct tape. They did. <laughs> <laughs> they did be surprised. I mean, just, they'll put a sawhorse in front of you and go, this is your giant steed. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sure steeds don't give you splitters in your ass. <laughs> but I'll walk back and forth on it and make it look like it flies. Yeah. I'll tell you this, by the time we got on to Avatar, I got a chance to work on Avatar for a couple of weeks with Ruben, and they brought out this huge fiberglass dragon that they made as a mock-up so that they could get the feel of what this dragon, these dragons would be like, the Navi are flying through the movie. Like, if you've ever, ever seen the movie, any of you. And I'm sitting there going, just bring out the freaking sawhorse. By that point, I'd done so many, I was like, I don't want the dragon, I want the sawhorse. <laughs> I can rock that sawhorse. <laughs> I have a story about that. He's got a story about that. Okay. Uh, Johnny, did you have more to add? No. no. Who's next? Yes, sir. Uh, um, we'll, go to, we'll get to you. Um, between voice acting and mo motion capture and actual physical acting, like, like television or video, uh, what do you guys, which, which would you say is your preference? Like, which do you enjoy more? I miss being on a set, a real set, because... It's you. What's that? I feel like it's you, you know? It's more yeah. of you, you know? It requires all of that, you know? Well, what's Although nice it really depends <laughs> on the role for me, I guess. It does depend on the role. Yeah. I think if you get a cool motion capture role, that's fine. Yeah, right. Because with motion capture, you can play roles that you normally wouldn't be cast to play. Right. And that's kind of fun. But on a set, you get to work with the creativity of the set designer and the prop maker, and you go there, and there's all kinds of extra ideas that inform you about your character that you may not have thought of, that I think it makes it fun. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I just like being on a set. But I started out working on a set. That may change in the future, you know. The whole acting industry, as we know, it may, may be different another 20 years from now. As technology gets better, I mean, we might be acting on holographic stages, which would be very beneficial in terms of time efficiency and everything, and then you'll be reaching for stuff. 
<laughs> your acting will have to be, how long does it look like you're picking up that glass of water? Yeah. That's a little heavy, Southworth. <laughs> no, 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 a little more. Glass is half full. Say so you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably something like, what it would be like. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, miss. Well, we're going to get to you next. There's a question for Dan. Yes. Um, replace any vowels in your name, in your first name, with emo. Emo? Yeah. Dan, emo, emo, no, so. The, the vowel. The vowel. The vowel. The vowel, the vowel only? So Dan? Demo? Demo? Demon. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we'll just figure this out. <laughs> we must kill the human now. All of them. <laughs> you were gonna see an ask question. Um, what was the audition process like for the role of Dante, and how did you guys feel when you got a separate character like Nero and Virgil? Um, for me, it was. Uh, I mean, it was a. I can't remember exactly, but there's a confrontation between. I think it was Dante and Virgil. I, th I thought so. Or was it Dante and Nero? I can't. Well, when, when I did it, when I auditioned as Dante, it was Dante and Virgil. Um, and uh, no, I thought it was Dante. It was Dante and, and, and Nero. I thought it was Dante and Nero. Yeah. No, this was this was for three. Oh, is, it, is that what you're talking about for three? Yeah. Oh, I. I okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. I. You so, know. Yeah. Yeah, and well, that's the one you auditioned for Dante as yeah, well. Yeah, right? I, I can barely remember it. I all I remember I, is them. I, it was. It was just, I played both characters the same. I went, like, F it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just played one, and I, 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 don't, I don't remember a whole lot. I just remember there's a confrontation. And, uh, yeah, actually, I don't really remember a whole lot about it. I, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's almost like I don't remember auditioning as Virgil at all. All I remember was auditioning as Dante, and I went, we're going to give you this other character, because we like the way you do it. <laughs> Do we have to do? We might have had to do some tricks or kicks. And I had to do some sword swinging and oh, wow. foot flinging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like auditioning for Power Rangers. Same thing. Do you guys know we both auditioned for the same role in Power Rangers? Adam Park. Yeah. yeah. So where I first they met They screened. Him. That's how we knew each other. Yeah. yeah we screen tested. <laughs> For the same for the same role, it was funny. And then he got the the show, and then I did the live show six months later, playing the same role. <laughs> it was really funny. It was really funny to go. That's the dude I screen tested with. He's on the screen, and then I come out <laughs> on live stage doing doing the, yeah exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Really funny. Any questions? Other questions? I got a question. Were you jealous that you got the part of that report? You know, I didn't know that he got that part uh, until until I saw until I was working on the stage show. And by then, I was like, well, the, the stage show was pretty cool to work on too because we got to travel the world. So you you know, and you know what? I always it's so funny. I always had this feeling that I would end up back on that show because I knew that they would eventually, especially when they started changing out the incarnations. I just always had a feeling I'd, I'd end up back on that show, and so I did. So I didn't I didn't ever really feel any kind of animosity about it. You know, as, a, as an actor, I mean, you there, you go out for so many different things. You audition so much. As soon as you walk out, yeah, you might have that, like, man, I really like to book that. But you don't hang on to it. You can't. You know, because if you do, then you're just going to be depressed. Because if you audition a hundred well, times, if, you'll get one part. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you hold on to some of those characters, you, you'll be really, 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 you'll be uh, clinically depressed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, this, in this industry, you got to let them go. Yes? I had to come across the role of Kenshin for uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy. They called me. The director called me. Um, the stunt coordinator recommended Mortal Kombat me. X? No, uh, Mortal Legacy. Kombat Legacy 2. Oh, oh, oh. The web series on YouTube. Oh, oh cool. Oh, that's the, where that picture is from then. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, Kevin Tanserone directed it. He's doing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. His, his, sister, his sister actually co-produces Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Or, or actually she produces. Anyway, they, they reached out to me and they weren't paying very much. <laughs> and I remember going, oh man, it's great. It's so nice to have people call you directly and go, we want you, we want you to do the role. No audition, nothing. Until you hear the second part, well, we can only pay you this much. And I won't say how much it was, but it's enough to make you go, oh man, 
all right, all right, so that means it's going to be about, okay, to, all right, I'll, I'll come away with this. That's enough to buy some rice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but the role is great. And so when you get those opportunities, you have to ask yourself, Am I, this is what I'm here for. Right. And so, and so I yeah. was like, I got to do this role. And, I, and I'm glad I did. I'm really glad I did. That's cool. Yes. Sure. Question for Ruben, how's it going so far? <coughs> oh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, what is the coolest animal? A frog, an elephant, or a dinosaur? <laughs> <laughs> is that our only choices? Oh, yeah. Yes. Frog, elephant, or what? Dinosaur. Or a dinosaur? Any dinosaur? I'm going to pick oh, the... A metallic one. A metallic <laughs> dinosaur? Is that going on as an animal? <laughs> uh, I pick frog. <laughs> but I have to share Mastodon with Walter, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm going to go with Walter. Is there anything you can tell us about doing Iron Fist? Um, no. Well, I mean, I, all I can tell you is that, yeah, that's happening. But I don't know when the character is being released. I thought it was going to be November. Um, but I don't, I don't really know, and I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's one of those characters that I'm familiar with, you know. Uh, but I went in acting like I didn't know anything. <laughs> you know? Are we going to be able to go over? Is this going to happen? What's going on, uh, you guys? Oh, are we? Did you just get it? Nothing. No. It's not. I didn't think so. Bummer. That's All right. Well, it's a bunch of cool stuff, and most of it's online. There you go. <laughs> it's a lot cooler though than yeah. you would think. Yeah, because there, we can put context. Yeah, in. exactly. We can talk about it. Well, perhaps there'll be another opportunity to do a panel where we can just do that. Perhaps. Perhaps. We'll see. Perhaps we will talk to the people that make things happen. <laughs> and maybe on Sunday. Sunday. Flex our muscles. Sunday anymore? on Sunday. What time are you flying out? Are you leaving Sunday? Uh, yeah. I'm leaving flight Sunday. Six or something like that. Okay. okay. My flight's at six two, which means we'd be leaving here around four. So okay. maybe yeah, right. Sunday, because I think Sunday's for me is a relatively <clears throat> chill day. Perhaps. Maybe Sunday they can squeeze some time in. We'll see. If there's a demand for it. Yeah. And if right. there's a cord for it. So if you're curious, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll have an answer. So find a table. Follow me on Twitter, and I will tweet it. There you go. Um, Thank you guys very much. Yep. It's a lot of fun.